will give us a spot on the screen. And we must now explain how its movement, which was demonstrated earlier in the film, is brought about. As in the case of focusing, there are two methods of bending the beam to produce the trace, electrostatic and electromagnetic. As will be explained later, we shall want to be able to move the spot both horizontally and vertically. And so we will need two deflector systems, horizontal and vertical. With electrostatic deflection, a pair of plates is used for each movement. For the moment, we will say that one plate of each pair is earth, while a deflecting voltage is applied to the other. Consider one pair only, with the upper plate at a higher or more positive voltage with respect to the lower. Since an electron tends to move in the direction of increasing positive voltage, the beam is bent upward. When the upper plate is at a negative voltage with respect to the lower, the direction of increasing voltage is towards the earthed plate and the beam is bent downwards. The angle through which the beam is bent is proportional to the voltage between the plates, which is indicated by the voltmeter. Similar reasoning applies to the other pair of plates. If the movement of the spot is speeded up, then, as mentioned earlier, due to the persistence of vision and the fact that the glow lasts for some little time after the spot has moved on, the appearance of a line is given. This line is called the trace. But it should be remembered that it is really a moving spot that is being seen. It is convenient to be able to move the entire trace either vertically or horizontally. Instead of one of each pair of deflector plates being earthed, they are tapped through potentiometers across a DC supply. Thus, each pair of plates is connected to a variable DC deflecting voltage. The horizontal control is called the X shift and the vertical the Y shift. With the electromagnetic deflector system, two pairs of coils are used. Each pair is connected in series, but in the opposite sense, so that their polarities are different. The deflection of the beam is proportional to the current in the coils, as shown on the meter. The beam is deflected in a plane parallel to the plane of the coil, in contrast to the electrostatic system where the beam is attracted to the plate. To move the trace about bodily in this system, a small DC current is superimposed on the deflecting current and varied by the X and Y shift control. Considering again the tube with electrostatic deflection, as an increasing alternating voltage is applied between the Y plates, the spot moves vertically. Similarly, if an increasing alternating voltage is applied between the X plates, the spot moves horizontally. If both increases are started simultaneously, the spot moves both vertically and horizontally and so traces out a sloping line. However, we usually want to watch on a cathode ray tube more complicated variations such as those of an incoming signal with time. If we apply the 50 cycle AC main supply to the Y plates, we get a line traced out on the tube face formed by the spot moving up and down 50 times a second. Slowed down very considerably, we can follow the movement of the spot for each cycle but this movement only lasts one fiftieth of a second. To investigate the waveform of the supply, we want to see how the voltage varies as the cycle proceeds. To do this, the spot is also moved horizontally at a constant speed over the tube face. These two movements of the spot, when combined, trace out 
about the waveform, which, however, for one cycle lasts for one fiftieth of a second only, and so gives no time to note any detail. If the trace from A to B were continued for another cycle to C, we would find that the trace from B to C would be a repeat of A to B. So, we superimpose this subsequent section B to C on the initial section A to B. This is achieved by swinging the spot back in a very short time from B to A at the end of each cycle. In other words, the spot in slow motion here traces out the wave from A to B. On reaching B, it is swung back to A to continue the wave. The final apparently stationary waveform that we see is then composed of a large number of these single traces rapidly superimposed. To produce this horizontal movement of the spot in practice, the X shift is adjusted to bring the spot to the left hand side. A steadily increasing voltage is applied between the X plate and the beam is bent to the right. The voltage is then quickly reduced to zero and the spot flies back. connected across the deflector plates is charged from a constant DC supply through a resistance. A meter shows the voltage building up across the condenser. It is arranged that the valve connected across the condenser will conduct when a certain voltage has built up across it. The condenser then discharges rapidly through the valve and its voltage drops to zero. The valve then ceases to conduct and the condenser charges up again. This is an elementary form of time base. More complex ones are usually used with the object of getting a more uniform voltage rise and achieving very high frequencies. When, as in this case, the time base is independent of the signal applied to the vertical deflector system, it is said to be free running. If the two systems are not in complete synchronism, trace moves along the tube face. We are back in step now. To prevent this movement, the operation of the time base is sometimes started by the signal, in which case the time base is said to be triggered. Returning to our diagram of the simple time base circuit, it is apparent that we will want to vary the velocity of the spot across the tube face, that is the rate of buildup of the voltage across the condenser. This is dependent upon two factors in the circuit, the capacity of the condenser and the resistance through which it is charged, so that we obtain various fixed time-based speeds by switching in various condensers and allow for final adjustment of the spot velocity by using a variable resistance which is known as the velocity control. We have seen that a cathode ray tube can give a very clear and useful picture of variations of voltage at almost any frequency. By applying a succession of known steady voltages and marking the tube face accordingly, the peak value of unknown voltage waveforms can be estimated. It is equally simple to study the current in a circuit, since if we insert a suitable resistance in series, the voltage across it will be proportional to the current. This voltage, amplified if necessary, may then be applied to the Y plates of the tube in the usual way. As in the case of voltages, by passing a succession of known steady currents through the resistance, the tube can be calibrated and the peak value of an unknown waveform can be estimated. Although recurrent phenomena give the most easily studied picture, the cathode ray tube is equally useful for purposes where the phenomenon only happens once. For example, we may wish to study the light output from a flash bulb. How long does it last? And when is it at its brightest? We arrange a photoelectric cell and amplifier to apply a voltage to the wire plates of a cathode ray tube, which will be proportional to the light flux. 
flash may be ignited and the time base triggered by the same switch. As you see, the trace is gone before you can study it. Very well, we'll rig up a camera to photograph the tube face and so obtain a permanent record. 